thermal interaction between two systems. Consider a system A, for example, a copper block, and a system B, for example, a container filled with water, which initially are in equilibrium at the temperatures T sub A and T sub B, respectively. In the temperature range of interest, the volumes of the systems remain essentially unchanged. And their respective heat capacities C sub A and C sub B are essentially temperature independent. The systems are now placed in thermal contact with each other and one waits until the systems attain uh, their final equilibrium temperature T. Use the condition of conservation of energy to find the final temperature T. So uh, system A has an internal energy change, mean internal energy change, that is due to the heat absorbed by system A because the volume is kept constant, the work done is zero, dV is zero, therefore the work done on system A is zero. Uh, so we find that this internal energy change, delta E A bar, is equal to heat capacity of system A times the temperature difference delta T, so it will be C sub A equilibrium temperature minus initial temperature. This is heat absorbed by system A. Heat absorbed by system B similarly will cause an internal energy change uh, because for system B dVB is zero and work done on system B is zero. So I can write the mean energy change for system B heat capacity of B times delta T which is CB T minus TB. Because the total energy is fixed, Ea bar plus Eb bar is a constant, uh, we have delta Ea bar equals to minus delta Eb bar. So uh, the heat absorbed by A is minus the heat absorbed by B. So Ca T minus Ta plus Cb T minus Tb. This is the, uh, the change in the mean energy of the total system. This must be zero. <clears throat> So we can solve for T from this equation. Uh, if I take T to the, uh, if I take this into T parentheses, T times uh, heat capacity of A plus heat capacity of uh, B, and take the rest of it to the right hand side. On the right hand side, I have C A T A plus minus CBTB will be plus CBTB, CBTB. Therefore, I will find that the equilibrium temperature must be given by the expression C sub A T A plus C sub B T B divided by C A plus C B. Now let's work on part B. Use the entropy ds is equal to d bar q over t to calculate the entropy change of A and B and use these results to calculate the total entropy change of the combined system and uh, this entropy change will correspond to going from the initial state to the equilibrium situation. Now uh, given that the heat capacities are essentially temperature independent, delta S A can be written as from initial state to final state integral of d bar Q over T. This is from initial state to final state C A D T over T which is uh, C sub A natural logarithm T final over T initial which is uh, going to give us for the entropy change of system A heat capacity of A natural logarithm final temperature divided by initial temperature T over T A
The entropy change for system B will be calculated similarly. The entropy change of system B will be from initial state to final state CB dt over T, which will be CB natural logarithm T divided by TB for entropy change of B. And now I have to find the total entropy change. Uh, so I need to add these up because entropy is an extensive uh, parameter. Uh, the total entropy change will be delta S total equals delta S A plus delta S B. Therefore, delta S total will be C sub A natural logarithm T divided by T A plus C sub B natural logarithm T divided by T B the entropies add up now let's look at part C uh, show explicitly that Delta S can never be negative and that, and that it will be zero only if T A is equal to T B you may find it useful to exploit, exploit the inequality natural logarithm of x is less or equal to x minus 1. So I want to take a look at this uh, inequality. So let's take a look at the inequality natural logarithm of x is less or equal to x minus 1. So we can show this by taking a function f of x which is x minus natural logarithm of x so as x goes to uh, zero natural logarithm of x is going to go to minus infinity so f of x on the other hand will go to because it's minus natural logarithm plus infinity as x goes to plus infinity uh, the function f of x will go to uh, plus infinity also because x is uh, greater uh, or equal to natural logarithm of uh, x uh, so when is x equal to natural logarithm of x so that means uh, e to the x is equal to x so when is this satisfied for uh, x equals 0 for example we have uh, 0 and 1 so it is not satisfied when x equals 1 it is not satisfied actually it's not uh, greater or equal to it is greater so x is uh, greater than natural logarithm of x it seems so because the natural logarithm of x is uh, basically reducing uh, the the value so uh, in both limits, when x goes to 0 and x goes to infinity, the function is becoming infinite. Uh, now, on the other hand, if I look at the extremum points of this function, df dx, that is 1 minus 1 over x equals to 0, I find that x equals 1 is an extremum point. So because the function itself is going to infinity in both limits, x goes to 0 and x goes to infinity, I see that this function f of x uh, has a minimum. Uh, so this must be, uh, due to this reasoning here, it's a minimum. So I find that it has to be doing this. So this is x equals 1. I have the function asymptotically going to infinity here and asymptotically going to uh, and also going to infinity as x goes to infinity so therefore uh, this function has a minimum at x equals 1 so when x is equal to 1 f of x f of 1 is equal to 1 minus natural logarithm of 1 which is 1 so x minus natural logarithm of x is greater or equal to 1 uh, so if x minus natural logarithm of x is greater or equal to 1, we can write this as x minus 1 is greater or equal to natural logarithm of x or multiply this by 
minus 1 1 minus x is less or equal to minus natural logarithm x or natural logarithm of 1 over x so uh, the problem says you can exploit this inequality natural logarithm of 1 over x is greater or equal to 1 minus x to show that the entropy change can never be negative now what was the entropy change the entropy change was the total entropy change is c a natural logarithm t over t a and c b natural logarithm t over t b so that's what we had now if i look at the entropy change of a system a uh, this quantity natural logarithm of t over t a should be greater than 1 minus uh, x which is t a over t is less or equal to natural logarithm t over t a and on the other hand for entropy change of b i have 1 minus t b over t is less or equal to natural logarithm t over t b now if i uh, multiply uh, this inequality with c a and this inequality with c b i would obtain c a times uh, t minus t a over t uh, plus c b times t minus t b over uh, t is uh, less or equal to uh, the total entropy change okay so uh, now at this point uh, for the left hand side i can write this as uh, c a minus c a t a over t plus c b minus c b t b over t which is equal to c a minus c a t a plus c b t b divided by t now if you go back to part a you can see that t is c a t a plus c b t b divided by c a plus c b so 1 over t would be uh, c a minus for 1 over t i can write uh, there was a plus c b here uh, c a plus uh, c b So this would be equal to C A plus C B minus C A plus C B divided by T A C A plus T B C B multiplied with T A C A plus T B C B. So these two would cancel and you would find it's zero. So delta S total must be greater or equal to zero as suggested by the problem statement so we have uh, looked at the uh, conservation of energy between systems a and b heat absorbed by a plus heat absorbed by b must be equal to zero from this equation we have obtained uh, the temperature in terms of c a c b t a t b and the entropy change is uh, the when the heat capacity is temperature independent so this is not a function of temperature in that case it is uh, c a ln t f over t t initial which is t over t a for system a and t over t b for system b and we add them up to get the total entropy change and then we looked at the function x minus natural logarithm of x and we see that this function has a minimum at x equals 1 and it goes to infinity as x goes to 0 and it goes to infinity so from this behavior basically we see that f of 1 which is uh, 1 uh, is the minimum point so x minus ln x is greater or equal to 1 gives us the inequality natural logarithm of 1 over x is greater or equal to 1 minus x so for the entropy change of a we have a uh, natural logarithm of t over t a is greater or equal to 1 minus t a over t and for b we have a similar result if i multiply 
these two inequalities by CA and CB and add them up, I will get the total entropy change on the right hand side of the inequality and on the left hand side I have shown that I get zero. So indeed the total entropy change is greater or equal to zero.